It's been a while since I've seen you here. I know. Um, when I looked, I was actually quite surprised. It was the beginning of August that I last did one of these. So, hello, welcome. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. I've realised when I've been setting up this morning that I have a new phone and the new phone does not have the microphone, the place I can plug in the microphone that I have. So hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, but yes, hello. It's nice to see you. I'll just wait a moment till some more people can stop touching my face. I'm sure you won't meet everyone else and keep touching your face. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so it has been a long time since I've done one of these. I've got stuff stacked all around me, all the things that I can remember that I've done since I've seen you last. Um, so I guess I'll probably just get started. Um, so much has happened in the last six months or so. It's just been nuts. Like we had the bushfire crisis in Australia, which was just awful. And I just feel so much for all those people who um, went through that and now having to do this. I mean, ugh, I can't imagine. Anyway, tough times for everybody, but um, we're just doing what we can to just keep on going here. And I'm sure you're doing the same. So what have I been doing since I saw you last? Lots of things. <laughs> Now, I'm not sure what I showed you last time because it wasn't Sirens Atlas book wasn't long out. So I'm not sure if I showed you this or not. So my Sirens Atlas books, yeah, you can take it back. But they're also available in hardback. It's a lovely hardback copies as well. Um, so that's for, whoops. <laughs> Grey Square Flare is also available in paperback and hardback, hardcover, so that is cool. Um, you can get them from my shop or Amazon or all that sort of stuff, but I just wanted to show you because they're so nice, they're so, they feel nice and they're sturdy and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that because I'm sure that I haven't shown you those before. But while <laughs> something has popped up in the last week or two, with my Granny Square Flare book, a few people have pointed this out to me. If you turn to page, ooh, let me see, what page is it? 35. We have this lovely square. I know it's backwards, but can you see what it's called? It's called Corona. Isn't that nice? Um, so a few people have made, decided to make that square as <laughs> it's topical. It wasn't why I named it, obviously. I named it because it's... It's circles and it's like the corona around the sun, like a bit of an aura around the sun. That's why I named it corona, but a lot of people are actually making it now. But <laughs> it's also one of the patterns that I chose from the Grace Bird Flare to make a project out of. I'm just going to the right page. This one. <laughs> so I've used that corona square to make this blanket. Hello, hello in Oregon. Hello. Yes, a Corona Square. So this is my Corona Blanket. <laughs> um, hello in Brisbane. Anyway, so a friend has said that they, they need a blanket for a baby. So I'm getting sending this one off to her now. Um, it doesn't matter what it's called. It's I think it's a beautiful, bright blanket anyway. So I have a use for it. It's in, popped in the mail today. All right. Um, yes. <laughs> So what else have I done since then? So that's the books. I have got so much stuff stacked around me <laughs> to show you. Okay, Granny Square Academy is out. It has been out. I don't even. I can't remember when I launched it because who knows what even what day it is even at the moment. But Granny Square Academy is something that I've wanted to do for a long, long time. Hello, hello. <laughs> just um, I'm seeing your comments here. Just if you have any questions, just write them in and I'll hopefully answer them. If I see them. <laughs> so Granny Square Academy is something I wanted to do a very, very, very long time. Um, because I know how to do a Granny Square. A lot of people know how to do a Granny Square, a traditional Granny Square that they learnt as they, when they were kids, whatever. And then that's where they stop. They don't think that they have the skills to move on, where you absolutely do. If you know how to make the stitch that you use, as a granny, make, you use to make a Granny Square, you can do anything. So Granny Square Academy is this thing I wanted to do for ages. I've probably started it three, four times over the last three or four years and always put it away. But now it's actually out. It's done. So what is it? It's a 10-part course. Hi! <laughs> um, where you have, there are 10 different squares and each one takes you, 
along a journey, <laughs> a learning crochet journey. So from the, if you know how to do a granny square, if or if you you've taught yourself to crochet, you're not sure if you're really doing it right. Um, you do know what you're doing, just want to brush up on skills, find out some stuff, then Granny Square Academy is for you. So each pattern leads you on to the next thing. So you learn one thing and then you build on those skills in the next pattern. So I can't remember how many pages the document is, the PDF. It's like 80 pages, 120 pages, something, something ridiculous. But there's like pages and pages and pages of help. There's video, there's charts, there's step-by-step -step photos. I explain why you do things, not just how you do things. And when you, while you're learning, you can make whatever squares you like and you might end up with a nice sample blanket. So it starts with a solid grain square here, this one. And then you learn a new technique. In, so in that, in that square, you're learning how to work into stitches, which you don't do when you're making granny squares. <laughs> Hello. Yes, I'm sad about that too, Pam. I'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, so you learn how to work into stitches in that one. And then the next square you do, if I can find it here, is you learn how to skip stitches. So you're working into stitches and skipping some stitches. And then I think you learn how to, I can't remember the order now, but you learn things like working into the back loop. So you have this line of stitches here. You learn how to do different types of clusters. You learn how to do back post stitches. You learn how to do another kind of cluster. You learn how to, oh, I've got a stitch marker in there. You learn how to do spike stitches and front post stitches. <laughs> ah, great. That's great. <laughs> Michelle's just saying that she loves, her, she's got her mum doing Granny Square Academy. She loves it. Lots of people have loved it. It's been great. And then there's a final square that you put everything together. So you learn how to read patterns and then by the end of it, you should be able to pick up any pattern and be able to read what you're doing. So there's lots and lots and lots and lots of information in there. And I, I loved putting it together and it's great seeing you all make it. Stop touching my face. <laughs> so there you go, Granny Square Academy. Easy, you have the skills to do this, trust me. Um, what else do I, oh, it's not only just making squares, I should say too, I teach you how to change colours, I teach you how to join your squares, how to work out how much yarn you need if you're going to make a project out of green squares. Lots and lots and lots of things in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pardon me, I'm just going to have some water. I hope you've all got a drink. Do I have a pattern for the wrap on the Facebook page? Can you describe it for me, Jenny? There's a few different things. Do you mean... There's a, 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 a lady standing in a cream blanket. If that's what you mean, then that's my Mandalay pattern, but I'm not sure because there's so many pictures. <laughs> Let me know which one you're talking about. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Pardon me. Okay, so that's that. That's one thing that I have done since I saw you last, and I love it. It's great. All right, the next thing I have done, I've been working on my next book idea, which is, was always never going to be out until 2021. But when I was doing it, I would come up with, there's a pattern that I did and an idea just wouldn't leave me alone. So I went with it and decided to turn it into my cow for this year, which is Mandalay. So I have so much here. <laughs> um, Granny Square Flare book. Doesn't Granny Square Flare cover it all? Um, Granny Square Flare does have a lot of information in there. Um, for teaching you how to join and all that sort of stuff. But if you're not sure exactly about where to work into stitches, where to, how to read a pattern, then Granny Square Academy is more for you. It's, it's Granny Square Academy. If you know how to do a traditional Granny Square and that's it, do Granny Square Academy and then you'll be able to do anything in the book. I hope that answers that. The wrap with the coffee cup. Ah, that is actually, um, oops, excuse me. All the patterns from Siren's Atlas made into a just a rug um, and Sam is watching now thank you Sam <laughs> made that one for me she used four ply yarn to make a smaller um, she used all the squares and made a blanket I'm just trying to find yeah oh, there we go. Let's 
same picture in the book. So that's actually the Sirens Atlas patterns in there. There you go, Jenny. <laughs> yes, so Mandalay. So Mandalay is actually made up of three different size squares. Uh, whoops. It started with this med medium sized one. And then I made it a small one. And also, if I can find. A large one. Oh, here we go. I've got a large one in a different colour. So there's three different squ size squares that are all that you can make into a blanket. So you can use any types of yarn. This is the same one made. This is the large square made in four ply yarn. So you can see the size difference there. It's four ply and eight ply behind. Or you can even use, where's it gone? This is made with 10 ply or worsted weight. So giant, giant. <laughs> you can see the three different sizes there. So yeah, sorry, just reading. Oh, you made the Melbourne wrap, awesome. That's great. Melbourne wrap from Granny Square Flare, yes. Um, yes, yeah, so there's three different squares. There's so much room for colour play. Um, I change colours every round for that one, I think. Almost every round, not every round. <laughs> um, or you can just do the flowers in one colour and the background in another colour. You can alternate your petal colours. Um, so many options. Let's just see what else I've got in here. Yes. <laughs> So I have a few samples here. So Jazzy, I you know you're watching too, Jazzy. Thank you very much. Made this one for me. So this is using just, these are all cotton, the ones that I've showed you, but you can use any yarn, that's fine. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. I was just making a joke in my Facebook group about you getting my isolation here. I haven't pulled the straightener out and it's all a bit nutso. So thank you, Laura. <laughs> Um, when I was talking about colour and name suggestions, Jazzy came up, she thought it would look good as a Handmaid's Tale inspired thing, blanket. So I asked her to actually make this sample for me. So she's just used the medium square, the maximum square from the blanket. There's nine of them in this smaller, it's like a lap blanket. And it looks really cool. But what I really love, like this is completely accidental, wasn't planned. If you have a look in the corners, how they meet, can you see the handmaids, the handmaids like bonnets and things? I think it looks ace. It worked out really well. I love how they meet. <laughs> so that's one option you can do. You can also do, this is my single colour version, which has got all the squares. So it's got 24 of the small squares, 12 of the medium ones, and one of the large squares. So it's really hard for me to show you all of that, obviously, but there you go. <laughs> there is my big blanket. But Sam, my crochet angel, made the blue sample for me too. So it's the same, same layout as my plain one, but she's just used the, the blues. And it looks great. It's awesome. <laughs> um, what else was I going to say, tell you about Mandalay? So you can choose your own layout for Mandalay too. You can make your own layouts because... I'm going to find these ones again. So two, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> two of the small ones is equal to one of the medium ones. Uh, the red one that I showed you was done in eight ply. Um, what do you do with all my finished projects? You have so many. I do have a lot, which is why one of them is going today to Nikki. I know Nikki's watching too. That's one I showed earlier, the Corona um, blanket. Um, I keep things for a while. So I had them for promotion and that kind of thing. But after a while, I've got, I have got cupboard full, cupboards full of boxes of projects and blankets. I'm sure we've got one on, good idea, Laura. <laughs> um, I've got, we've got, all the kids have got blankets and there's some in the lounge room and the kitchen and all that sort of stuff. So, but yes, I do pass them on after a while. All my family's got blankets. <laughs> 
yes, anyway, as I was saying, you can create your own layouts. So two of these join up here and then, then lengthwise across here, that's the same width as a big square. So you can just use big squares or you can make your own layouts with all different kinds of things. And all that information is in the pattern as well. So why is it called Mandalay? What is that all about? Well, I was looking for a name for the pattern. <laughs> yes, blue is my favourite colour, Sally. You'll soon realise that. <laughs> you see I'm wearing blue. Everything I do is blue, practically. Um, so when I was looking for a name <coughs> pardon me, for the blanket, um, someone suggested a name that made me think of Mandalay. And Mandalay is the name of the estate in a book called Rebecca by Daphne de Maurier. I have a, this book <laughs> with lots of her stories in it, and which is one of my favourite, favourite, favourite books ever. And I even love the film adaptation of it. It's probably one of the best film adaptations of a book I've ever seen, made in 1940. So this, I mean, the book is 80 years old, but it's still a great read. I love it. So, and the estate in Mandalay in the book is surrounded by giant rhododendron bushes. And it, this is a floral blanket. There's no escaping. This is a floral blanket. So I thought um, that would work really well. And it did. So I've named each of the squares after characters in the book. There's Danvers is the small one. Maxim is the medium one. And Rebecca is the large one. Oh, yay. Sandra's ordered her book. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Um, yeah, so look, it is, it is a little bit fiddly, the pattern, to create this nice defined edge around your petals. <laughs> uh, sorry, I don't speak pink. Pink is not a colour you're going to see from me probably ever, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, Mandalay pattern, I'll pop links to everything I talk about in this video in the comments down below afterwards. But if you go to my shop, just shop.spincushions.com, you'll see it there. Or if you go to my blog, spincushions.com, there's a post on the front page there that's got the Mandalay links to the pattern. Right. Um, yes, it is a bit fiddly to do in parts, but I think it's worth it. There are options. You can, you can see here, I have, oh, excuse me, that's chocolate. <laughs> you can see here that this, the change of colour from the petal round is not quite as defined as this one. You can do that if you want. It doesn't show up in... I'm sure I have a sample here to show you. Anyway, it doesn't make a difference when you do um, in the back loop only with one colour, but when you change colour, then it does make that petal definition not quite as crisp. But it's up to you. You can do what you like. And I've got lots of tips in the pattern. I'll show you how to do it. Oh, well done. <laughs> Someone's only got one damage to make. Someone else says, what's pink? I agree. <laughs> um, Yes, there's lots of help in the pattern. There's videos for each pattern. I've even for the first time done left-handed, like I mirrored all of the videos. So for left-handers, so you don't have to take out, you can take out some of that mental gymnastics you have to do. So there's videos, left-handed videos, there's charts, there's round-by-round -round help with photos. There's oh, so much help, so much help in the pattern that you should be able to do it. If you've got basic skills, then you should, you absolutely should be able to do the Mandalay pattern. And Jan, hi Jan, has finished her mind blanket. <laughs> she, I saw Jan in a workshop recently and she'd made a little bit, little mistake, but she's incorporated, she's gone with it. I love it. Good stuff. <laughs> so yes, that's Mandalay. So that was a very big um, tangent that I went on from working on, oh yeah, I'm working on my book for next year. <laughs> um, I ended up spending a few months getting this together. With help from a lot of people like Sam, thank you, and Jazzy, thank you, Michelle, my graphic designer, Joe, my photographer, all my testers. Ugh, so much work, so much work for everybody. But it's all come together really, really well. And perfect timing, as it turned out. Like I, the timing of me releasing the pattern just coincided with everyone being in isolation. So there's been a lot of people making it, which has been really lovely to see. Um, what else? It does, it does. Melanie's saying working into the, the tricky bit does get easier the more you do. And it's right. It's, she's absolutely right. It does. And also the bigger squares are a bit easier to do as well. So it's, I don't think it's worth it. It's worth that lovely, like it's flat, but you still get a really nice defined edge. So fiddly but worth it. All right. Ah, 
What else can I talk about? So in my Facebook group, lots and lots of people are sharing their lovely Mandalay blankets as they work on them, which is great. <laughs> I love seeing when people put their own colour things on them. People have changed colours in different spots to where I have, where I have, using completely different yarns. It's really lovely. So if you want to join my Facebook group, feel free to. There's just a few questions for to answer before you join because I get there's a lot of spammers who come and say yeah 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 and then they post awful stuff. So just answering a few questions cuts a bit of those a few of those people out. Um, but yeah, you're welcome to join. Come and have a look. Come and share what you're doing. Ask questions. It's I set up my Facebook group for, as a place for you to come and get help with my patterns. So if you're ever making any of my patterns and you get stuck, that's a good place to go. There's lots of people to help if I'm not around at the time too. Um, yes, as I say, a bit of a tangent from what I was meant to be doing. But anyway, <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> um, and I was actually a bit worried that people wouldn't like it because it is a little bit fiddly. Um, I really was. I was actually a bit hesitant to put it out there, but I'm glad that I did and went with it because everybody's loving it. That's good. Um, yes, I am doing a cowl for it too, a crochet along. Um, uh, only one part's been sent out yet, but part two comes out on Monday. So if you want to join the crochet along, you can just sign up for my newsletters and make sure you tick the cow box when you do, and you'll get emails to prompt you to make a, a, a manageable bit in a couple of weeks. And I'm also doing a read along, so we're reading a few chapters of Rebecca at the, at the well as well. <laughs> That's great. Melissa's made an heirloom blanket from Granny Square Flair, and she loved it. Cool. Um, yeah, so it's fun times. Well, fun times in hard times. It's a little bit of relief from the from the hard times, I guess. So that's that. What else have I been doing? Um, sorry, I'm just reading a comment here. Jenny, sort of pushing the point of the hook, the term hook. Oh, okay. So she's manipulating a hook in a different way to get into that fiddly bit. That's great. That's working for you, Jenny. That's awesome. Um, so I'm going to rely on memory here for things that I've made in the since I saw you last. Um, knitting. I've been knitting is my sort of downtime thing because oh that's cool. That's great. <laughs> Lots of people being busy with their stash. Awesome. Um, so knitting, yeah, because crochet for me, like I love doing it and I love teaching it and everything, but when I'm crocheting, I'm always thinking, how am I going to communicate this? How am I going to get this out to people? What am I going to tell people about this? I'm always thinking about that kind of stuff, which is fine, but I need something that's just for me just to just to do. So that's where the knitting for knitting comes in. So usually on the weekends, I'll knit. Um, and I've knitted a couple of jumpers. I've gotten to colour work, which I really, really love. I've made two jumpers so far for my two older kids and I can't show you because I've sent them because they don't live here. <laughs> I've sent them off. Um, but that was so much fun. And I also made some colour work socks, which was really fun using leftovers from one of the jumpers that I made. Oh, I'm wearing something that I made. Sorry, I'm going to hopefully move this without knocking anything over so I can show you. So this tank that I made, I knitted. I was so happy with how it works and how it fitted. These little cutout bits down here. And it works really well. It's got all this shaping and things. <laughs> so that was really fun to do. Um, it had short rows to get shaping around the bust and a bit of waist, a little bit of waist shaping as well. I used um, Field of Dreams yarn. <laughs> How many hours a day do I knit or crochet? You probably, probably think it's more than I do. If I've got a big project to make, sure, it'll be hours and hours all day. Thank you, darling. <laughs> um, but if I'm just going through my normal work day, I can maybe get like an hour or two after, after dinner. <laughs> maybe I might get some crochet in. Most of my time is actually spent on the computer. Emailing, website, newsletters, shop, so much stuff. Um, I'm fine with doing lots of crochet. I do find with knitting I have to be more careful. Um, I get bad neck pain, but since I've switched to continental knitting style I'm actually better. Um, where do you get the patterns? All of my patterns are in my shop. Um, I'll put a link down below in the comments to 
oh where did I get the pattern for this the tank top sorry um I found it on Ravelry I'll put a link down in the comments to what it's called I can't remember it's like perfect summer top or something anyway I found it on Ravelry and yes the yarn is Field of Dreams yarn so it's uh, merino linen and a little bit of alpaca I think I can't remember by Great Ocean Road Woolen Mill and the Pearl Box Girls so um, I'll put a link to that yarn as well it's nice it has dropped a little bit since I've made it but not in a, not in a bad way <laughs> um <clears throat> what else ah I'm knitting at the moment um I wanted to my youngest daughter wanted a jumper initially she wanted a big full fair old color work stuff but she's changed her mind <laughs> So she found, we found on Ravelry um, a pattern for an oversized cardigan with pockets um, and I've got some yarn. It's pro I'm a bit scared about it <laughs> because it uses, <coughs> excuse me, the pattern uses two yarns held together and I couldn't find suitable yarns to replace that I could afford. Um, and it's got a lot of techniques and stuff in it that I haven't done before. But anyway, I had some help from my knitty friends and they recommended a, a yarn that I can use instead of holding two together, I can use one. So I ended up getting some of this lovely stuff. <coughs> Pardon me, my daughter chose the colour. I haven't spoken this much for so long. Um, <laughs> Continental Knitting Style is, I can probably show you because I have my knitting right here. I'm in the middle of doing a swatch. It's a giant swatch, way bigger than it needs to be, this yarn. Let me step by step. I'll get to you, Pam. <laughs> so this is from Rosabella Threads Tiramisu. This is a really it's a luxury yarn. It's a nice yarn. It is made with kid mohair, fine merino, and cotton. So it's got a lovely fluff that my daughter wanted fluffy, and she wanted the colour. She chose the colour. So I've started that. So I've started knitting this giant swatch. <laughs> so continental knitting. So instead of holding the <clears throat> yarn in my right hand and putting the needle in and wrapping it around like, like that, continental knitting, I hold the yarn like I do when I'm crocheting in my left hand and you just insert your hook, your needle, sorry it's really hard to show and I'm showing it backwards, and you just sort of let me do, go around this way so you poke your hook in your needle in and just sort of you pick the yarn and pull it through this is a really bad angle for me to be demonstrating but it's so much quicker and my body does not hurt <laughs> yes. so that's continental and you can do pearl and knit that way so that's what I'm doing um, I'm I just wanted to do this swatch to make sure that it is going to work for the pattern but it should because it's an oversized cardigan anyway it's not really fitted so I think it's going to be fine anyway that's my knitting project for the moment <laughs> what else am I doing um, I was I was meant to be at Crumbs Craft in Hills Hill tomorrow doing starting my weekend of workshops but with everything that's been postponed until September. Fingers crossed, everything will be on the improved by then. Um, yeah, I've done a few workshops, well, before everything happened. I did a few local workshops in at the Portland Library, um, went over to Mount Gambia, did a workshop, and I was getting it gearing up to do lots more, but I'm just not even organising anything now. We'll just wait till we have some sort of a new normal when we are able to go out again. And then I'll do some more workshops. Um, yes. What else? Crochet wise. So I've mentioned a couple of times I've been working on my next book for next year. And it's going to be big squares. So the first thing I did, sorry, I've got so much stuff here, was remake a lot of my bigger squares from the past. So this is um, Bob from my Greg Blanket pattern. pattern. Yes, I have crazy names. <laughs> So that's Greg, Bob from Greg. Um, what else have I got here? Well, this is one that I've never released. Yeah, I was too, Trish. Yeah. <laughs> but hopefully September, we can all do it again. 
There's this giant one that I've never released. <laughs> um, oh, this is giantess. Look at my giantess pattern. Um, this is kaboom, one of my older patterns that I did for a cow. What else have we got? That was another never released one. <laughs> um, oh, it's the mini giantess pattern. Still big, but mini. Um, I've dropped something in the ground there. What was this one? Oh, no, maybe this was Kaboom. The other one that I showed you before wasn't Kaboom. What was that one? Oh, no, that's a new one I haven't actually released yet. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is Kaboom that I did ages ago for a cow. What else have we got here? Ah, the Mayan Square. That was fun remaking that. I forgot how much fun that one is to make because you've got so many sections. It's cool. Um, my Melbourne pattern. No, it's not. That's Fran. That's from Fran. Is it Kim? Kim from my Fran blanket. That's right. <laughs> this is my Melbourne one. So I've made the Melbourne wrap that someone was talking about earlier. Uh, what's this one? Oh, another one that hasn't been released ever. Not sure about that one. We'll see. So that's what I've been doing there. I've designed a few new ones as well. Oops. The big ones take longer. <laughs> yeah, they are. This is all Bendigo parchment cotton. This one, not sure about this one yet. It probably needs some more tweaking. I think that was the first attempt. There's just too many stitches and it's too icky. Um, yes, absolutely. A lot of those ones, if you think back to the names that I said, Kaboom, Mayan, Giantess, Greg, Fran, they're all in my shop. I'll pop the link in my, to my shop down below. Um, sorry, Sally, what are you asking for there? Um, I'm not sure. The COVID square, the Corona square is in my book, Granny Square Flare, if that's what you're asking. Is that the last one? This one here. Yeah, I'm still, that's a work in progress. But as you can imagine, when I have to rework these, because it's not quite right, you can see it's not right. The concept's there, but the, it's just not sitting nice. So I've got to go back and redo that one again. Sometimes with um, designing, you can sort of get stuck in. No, it's working, it's working, it's working, it's working. I'll keep going, I'll keep going, I'll keep going. And then you block it and you block it and you block it really hard. And you think, oh, shouldn't need to be blocked that hard. <laughs> so I need to go back and do it again. So yes, but as you can imagine, it takes a long time to rework something like this. So yes, that's what, that's what I'm going to be getting on with now. Um, but every now and then, because designing is my favourite, favourite thing to do, just for a bit of sanity, just for no particular reason. I'll sit and design. So I had a bit of a play with some colours and did this one the other day. No idea what I'm going to do with it. That's just, who knows? <laughs> but I'm also really into, where'd the other one go? At the moment, just um, repeating pat patterns. Ah, uh, thanks, Vero. <laughs> so it's just really simple patterns that just repeat and could repeat endlessly. That's kind of what I'm into at the moment. I don't know why. And I've kind of played with this. This one's not ready yet. There's a, I want to change something in this pattern. But the idea being that it can sort of meet where they join somehow and create other patterns. But yeah, this is just for fun. That these are, don't expect anything from these anytime soon because, yeah, as I say, just for a bit of calm for me. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, I did a workshop in Queensland too. That's right. I had to go to Queensland for a quick family trip, so I thought I might as well do um, a workshop up there. So I went to Crochet Australia in Yandina and did a couple of workshops there. That was really fun. Um, that's that. Um, yeah, that's about it really. So what's next? So I was hoping to go to the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show again, um, but at the moment they're saying, look, we'll, we'll plan with it still going ahead. Thanks, Jazz. Um, but, you know, it may be just put off till next year. It may just not happen this year. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I'm going to keep working away on those big squares. And I'm still doing it. Well, I'm trying to do a, I'll try. I'll try, Susie. Susie wants me to come back to Queensland. When everything's clear, sure. I'd love to get travel. Um, 
what did I say? Yes, I'm still trying to do a weekly email. Like I used to have a bit of a schedule, like I do a certain topic each week in a month, but that's gone out the door because, you know, everyone's up in the air at the moment. So I'm just sort of doing bits of random pieces. Um, so I'm going to keep doing that, try and doing that. Next week I think I might do like a bit of a tutorial on something. Don't know. We'll see. But yes, you can sign up to my newsletters. I'll put a link down below later. Um, I'm going to try and be a bit more present on social media. Um, it's hard, but I think we need connection. <laughs> new office. Yes, I am in my new office. Hooray, it's awesome. <laughs> I have a room dedicated in my house again as an office. So I've got, I'm not turning the camera around because it's a bomb site. I've got boxes of books along there. My desk is there with paper all over it. I've got, ugh, it's a bomb site. Anyway, but yes, I have a nice blue wall. Um, yes, I'm going to, yeah, be social media. I think we, we need that connection with people, even though we're not seeing people in person. I think it's important to keep up those connections and I'm going to try and do that more on social media um, without obsessing over it and spending too much time on it as well. I'm going to find that right balance. So I'm going to try that. Um, but Aussies, Australian people, there's something fun if you're a crocheter coming very, very soon. You might want to follow Crochet Australia on their Facebook or have a look at their blog. There's nothing in up yet, but very soon there will be. It'll be fun. Let me just say, I'm just, all the info I can say at the moment is Crochet Tournament. And we'll leave it at that. I'll give you more information soon. Um, now, what else? No idea. I'm in limbo like everybody else. Um, we're staying home when it's possible. Sure, we have to go out sometimes for supplies, medical, just like anybody else, but we're staying home. Um, hubby's still working. He's still, his job's still going. Other family members have lost jobs. It's hard. It's hard for everybody. Um, businesses are closing down. There's supplies that I use that have already made the decision. That's it. They're out. They're done. Which is so sad. Um, yeah, I can just we can just hope and pray that everybody gets through as unscathed as possible. That we can stop this thing. Um, anyway, I'm trying not to be a downer. We're being nice and positive here. So anyway, um, I'm trying as hard as I can to stick to my normal work schedules because I work at home anyway, but it still feels different. Um, sometimes I do what feels right each day. Some days that is sitting on the couch and watching telly. <laughs> some days it's cleaning the house from top to bottom. Some days it is just flitting from thing to thing, not being able to focus. But, you know, we're all in the same boat and we will all be okay. Well, hopefully most of us will be okay. Um, yes, we are lucky to have yarn. And we are lucky that we're still able to shop online. It's lucky our still local post office is still open albeit one at a time going in, um, yeah. So hard times, but hopefully your crafting is helping keep your hands and minds busy, no matter what that crafting is, whether it's crochet, knitting, scrapbooking, quilting, whatever. I hope you've got something. It does, it does. And stay connected with your friends. I know I'm having a, a catch up with my knitty friends. We're doing a Zoom meeting on Sunday. We've got, we've got it all planned. We're going to have our snacks and our drinks and our knitting and sit and watch each other and talk to each other on screen so I think we're lucky we live in the digital age and we are still able to connect with people so make sure you do that and I think I need to stop and <laughs> unless anybody wants to ask any questions has anything else they want to know do I have any fave sites to buy yarn look it depends where you are Jenny in this day and age like I use a lot of Bendigo cotton and a lot of what I've shown you today is from Bendigo woolen mills um, but uh, some of it is from independent small people I think I'd be if you can afford to support the small independent yarn creators Great Ocean of Woolen Mill, Rosabella Threads all sorts of different places um, online it depends where you are but I know that there's a lot of people buy from Wool Warehouse or Derrimore's lots of places so quick google is probably your best answer there <laughs> um, it depends on your 
preferences as well. What sort of yarn you like to buy. I like to buy a, a non-mercerized cotton or a natural wool. I like natural fibres the best. It's up to you what you're after. All right, I think I need to stop. Yes, I do. So, oh. Yes, it is very hard, Christine. There's a lot, I mean, I've, one of my kids is lucky they still have a job. They're working from home, which is great. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have very big stashes that they are quite lucky to have and be able to use. So that's awesome. All right, I'm going to stop. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see if I'm back next week. It depends what I do. If I don't get anything done, I don't have anything to show you. So there's probably no point, but I will be back when I have some things to show you and I'll put an event up again so you can tune in if you want to. I'll also pop this video up on my Facebook, well, sorry, on my YouTube channel. If you prefer to watch things there. Thanks, darling. Thanks for tuning in. So thank you everybody for watching and I hope you all stay safe and well and enjoy your crochet. Thank you. Bye.